just arrived in the post today is what I hope is going to be a new clutch master cylinder. So let's just open that up and see if it's the right bit to the right part. This is the cheapest I could find. This is just under £34. It came from Lithuania. Um, and what was quite good about them, apart from the fact it was relatively cheap, is I ordered this last Thursday. It's Wednesday today, so this came in less than a week from Lithuania. And as I say, they were very efficient in making sure that it was the right part. You can actually buy clutch cylinder rebuild kits for seven, eight, nine, ten pounds, but it does rely on the inside of the cylinder being in good condition, not scratched or pitted. And I kind of figure for 40 pounds, I'd much rather have a new one that's going to last a few years um, rather than hoping that we can repair the old one. So we're going to go down to the garage next and try and install this new clutch cylinder on this 280SL, 1983 280SL, it's a five speed manual. This one here is leaking. We've taken the, first thing is we've taken the, the rod out of there and we're gonna, the very first thing we're gonna do is attach this to the car and it goes, attaches to the car, two threaded studs and then there are just two 10 mil bolts holding it on and it attaches to the clutch pedal via a, this is a threaded thing here, via a 14 mil I think it is. 14 mil nut and basically that's all that holds that onto the that cylinder car. basically is attached to the clutch pedal under the dash and you could in theory access it from under the dash but I find it much much easier just to take the instrument panel out there is a video on uh, my site somewhere to how to take it out it just pulls straight out basically you just have to disconnect some wires detach the um, hose from here and pull it through not all the way because you might struggle to get it back through the firewall but we're going to pull it out about two or three inches because the very first thing we're going to need to do is plug that hose into the rubber fitting of here and then we're going to slot it over the screws okay, well it's a bit of a tight fit but we managed to get that hose over there now all we need to do is hook that over there and over there without those screws moving. I'm just going to pull that hose back through the other way so it's not okay, so The order of events is, first you plug this fitting into the back of the cylinder. It's quite tight to do that, which is why you pull that through and basically do it down by the pedals without trying to fiddle about up here. And then I've slotted this on once again. It's quite awkward because every time you slot it on, these two threaded studs or bolts want to move backwards. So I just wedge something behind them. I've just put the nuts on loosely and there didn't seem to be any washers that came off there, which is very surprising. I would have thought there might've been two spring loaded washers, but there was none when we took it off. So I'm not gonna put any on now. Then I'm going to have a go at putting the piston into the rubber fitting and attaching that to the pedal. Okay, this is the piston here that fits into the um, clutch cylinder and it's important that you get this the right way round. One side is just round and that's going to go against the metal clutch pedal and the other side has got a um, nut on it. You may need to hold that nut to stop it turning. So the metal clutch pedal is going to go here Bolt's effectively going to go through my finger and screw into that hole there. I'm going to put that on first. Okay, once you've um, put the two nuts on the slave cylinder, we're going to try and thread the piston in. But before we do that, we're going to actually thread this bolt through that way. So the thread is on this side. Um, it's just quite difficult getting that bolt in afterwards. So we'll put the bolt in first. The way to get this bolt into the clutch pedal is to put it into a small 14 mil um, socket first and then very carefully thread it through like that with the pedal pushed all the way to the ground give yourself more room and you should if you're careful to help if that wasn't falling down you should if you're very careful just be able to tilt that into there like so if you can see that, then you can just remove the socket. We've got the socket off, put a 14 mil closed ring spanner on there, and then lift the pedal back up. And then when you come to tighten the fitting on the other side, it won't be able to move. Fiddly getting that, that top 
bolt on there. But once you've done it, you can then tighten up these two bolts here. Once you've attached the clutch pedal to the top of the cylinder and the cylinder to the car, it's just a matter of putting that in there and hopefully just simply doing that up. Do it with one hand. I'm going to put the phone down and do it with two hands. It's important that you tighten that fitting up nice and tight, that banjo ball, and give everything a good clean as well as you can because the um, clutch fluid is very corrosive as you can see from here so we're probably gonna have to sand a bit of that down and maybe prime it and respray that to stop it rusting in the future but um, that is unfortunately is what you get when you have a master clutch cylinder leaking. We fitted the new um, master clutch cylinder to the car now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to top up the clutch fluid. I'm wearing gloves because clutch fluid is very corrosive not just to paint but to skin as well so the first thing we're going to do is top that clutch fluid and filling it up to just below the spout there. Attempting to bleed the clutch by myself using this method here. We've got three jugs poured into this innocent juice bottle here. I'm going to pour that quantity back into the jug and that's going to be used for topping up the um, reservoir. Um, and just by marking, making these marks, it's going to give us some idea of how much clutch fluid is actually bleeding out of the system so we don't overfill it. Next I'm going to attach a piece of clear tube to the bleed valve at the bottom of the car. One end of this tube is going to go into this hole that I've drilled, that's an 18mm hole and there's another small hole next to it just to allow air out. One end of the tube is going to go into there, submerged in the brake fluid, and the other end is going to be attached to the bleed valve on the car and we're going to be able to see any air coming out and avoid sucking any air back in, hopefully. This bit of tube, incidentally, is just something I got from a local kitchen shop. It's a tube you would use for siphoning um, when you're making wine or beer, so it's not expensive. This was £1.20 on special offer, but that's going to hopefully fit over the bleed valve under the car. I haven't got access to my ramp at the moment, so I've just jacked this car up. Um, a little bit just so I can crawl underneath to get access to the um, bleed valve. If you were very slim you might be able to do it without um, needing to jack the car up but that exhaust pipe is in the way. Um, make sure if you do do that and you crawl under the car you get some um, jack stands. You don't ever crawl under the car when it's just on the jack. So next up we're going to see if our tube fits to the bleed valve. The car now and this black tube here leads through the firewall and attaches to the bottom of the master's clutch cylinder that we've just installed in the car and the other end leads to this little unit here attached to the side of the um, housing which is the uh, clutch slave cylinder and on the end of the clutch slave cylinder is the bleed valve which is here on this particular car it had a little rubber um, bung on the end of it which just pulls off and I think that is a six or seven mil nut that we're going to need to crack the bead valve so we're just going to see if our tube fits on the end of there first. You are going to be using this siphoning hose here it comes in two parts you've got the soft flexible tube which is going to go into our um, bottle and you've got the hard plastic which is a smaller gauge which fits snugly over the bleed valve so that's going to go over the bleed valve and that's going to fit into the bottle. Off the hose to the bleed valve here and we're going to just put the other end of the hose into the bottle and then we can start pumping the clutch pedal and bleeding the okay, system. We've got the hose connected to the bleed valve the other side of the hose dipped into the clutch fluid in that bottle over there. Next we're going to crack the bleed valve and take the cap off the reservoir tank. You can already see fluid um, flowing to the low point here. The next thing we're going to do is to take off the cap 
here to get some gravity. And then we're going to gently pump the clutch pedal. What we've got to make sure is that the level of the clutch fluid in here never falls below the level of this heel so that it starts sucking in air. Really full to the top there. We're just going to give the clutch pedal a pump or two, which will pump fluid down this hose through the master cylinder, down the pipes. But we're not going to be too aggressive because we're going to be const constantly topping this up, making sure that it does not fall below. So we give the clutch pedal five pumps. We can see we've pumped a lot more fluid out. Now what we want is for that line to be completely free of air. The reason we've got that extra um, little hole in there is to obviously let the air out as it comes through the line. Let's give it five more pumps and see how we get. Just look at the colour of that clutch fluid that's come out of the car. Man, that's dirty. Clutch fluid to the maximum level. We've shut off the bleed valve. And now in theory, when we bump the clutch, it should be nice and hard. There should be no airline air in the system yeah, that's job done. The clutch pedal is now firm after a couple of pumps. Um, springs back nicely. Can't see any leaks at the master cylinder that we've just installed. I can't see any leaks at the bleed valve. Um, what I can see is some really filthy, disgusting um, clutch fluid that came out of the car. So we're going to dispose of that and then it's time to put in the instrument panel.